how you doing? Gentlemen. What do we got here? What I have is a first American edition of Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This is the first one that was printed in the United States. It was printed in Boston. So this is the book with Moby Dick in it, right? No. Moby is not in this book. No, that book's called Moby Dick. No. You ever hear of Captain Nemo? I'm finding Nemo. I found this book in a garage sale a couple of years ago. It was priced at three or four dollars. I thought I'd stumbled on a gold mine. What I would like to get is ten thousand dollars, and the least I'll take for it is nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. Pretty much what it's about, there's this giant ship sinking monster in the ocean, and some guys get on a boat called the Abraham Lincoln, and they're gonna go find this monster. Out in the middle of the ocean, there's a giant explosion. Three guys survive, and they end up landing on top of this giant monster. And then they're kind of freaked out because the monster's made of metal. Hatch pops open, they go down inside, and they're actually inside of a submarine with Captain Nemo. The big deal about the book is, though, is that it was written in 1870. I mean, it was kind of like the birth of science fiction. Seems like a pretty cool book. Jules Verne was kind of psychic. He wrote about everything from space travel to atomic power way before they actually became reality. And this one, he predicted modern submarines, electric lights, and scuba diving. Is this how you bought it, or? No, I sent it to a professional book restore. They put the original uh, cloth back on the spine. Okay. So it has the original cloth on the boards. OK, I'm glad you didn't tell me you did it yourself. Right. <laughs> I couldn't attempt that. What would you like to get out of it? I want 10,000. 10,000. Yes. For this book? For this book. Corey, I think you better call your dad over here. This is a big item. Do you want to uh, go with me over to a, a friend of mine's shop? She's a book expert. She can tell us everything there is to know about this and what it's worth. Not a problem. All right, cool. Usually, my dad handles rare books because, let's face it, he's a nerd. But there's a lot of money to be made in first editions, so I need to prove I can handle stuff like this on my own. 20,000 leagues is about 69,000 miles. A lot of people think that that means depth, that you're going down 20,000 leagues. That's not physically possible. It actually is referring to 20,000 leagues that they travel while under the sea. But it speaks back to what Verne is really famous for, which is these sort of exploration and travel narratives. So Antarctica, and in here they visit Atlantis. So I think everyone should read Jules Verne. He's a lot of fun. This book was published actually in Boston in 1872. A first American edition is actually one of the great rarities in science fiction. We're thinking a fire might have destroyed most of the copies. So you're looking at maybe 50 or less. We're not sure exactly the number, but it's very small. Right. We've got Osgood, the publisher, written at the bottom of the spine here. It says 20,000 leagues under the sea. If you look on the title page, it says, 20,000 Leagues Under the Seas, with an S at the end. That's one of the bibliographic points you look for for a first American edition. Another thing that the vast majority of them have is a jellyfish design here. It's very, very faded here, but it, it is there. Looking at all the points here, I'm really surprised. This is a first American edition. Cool. Wow. This book is very, very rare. So, That's big bucks, right? Yeah, let's talk about that. The value's really tied into the condition. This book, we've had work done to it. They've kept the original spine, but it's not in the best shape nonetheless. The gilt has been pretty severely faded. It's not the end of the world to see Vern with condition issues, because Vern is one of those people who was always heavily read over and over and over again. But you have to keep that in mind for collectors. You really want the very best. Yeah. So with all of that in mind, I would place this at about 12,000. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's nothing to be ashamed of. I'd be pretty happy with that. Well, thanks, Rebecca. Can I borrow your conference room for a minute? Yeah, I'll give you guys a second, <laughs> Thank all right? You. There may be only 50 copies tops, which is a tiny amount for a book this important. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 7,500 for it. 75, I think, is uh, too low. I think my number is still 10. I've got to make more than two grand off it. It's going to take me a while to sell. I'll give you 8,500 for it. I think I'm going to stick on 10. I think uh, I think it'll sell fast. There's not that many out there. Who are you going to sell it to? A, a book collector. You know how many of them you know? 
None personally. There you go. I know a lot. That's why you came to me to sell the book. Right, for my price. You're gonna have to come down from 10. I can't pay 10,000 for it. I will come down to 95 and that's my bottom dollar. Maybe a nine. Can't do nine. Why can't you do that? I nine? think 9,500 is gonna give you 25% return. I think that's a good number for you. If you wanna go 95, it's your book. All right, that'll work for me, man. Cool, 9,500. Good. Meet me back at my shop, we'll take care of the paperwork. Great. This guy is a really tough negotiator. I was not expecting to go that high. But I'm glad I picked it up because it's one of the rarest first editions that we've ever had come in.